Chris, um, uh, what do you think will be the next challenge for us to uh, manage this uh, Internet of Things that we've just heard about um, for the next generation of, uh, as, uh, as we heard from you, Val, uh, all the young, uh, um, experienced people in this digital world? Well, I think that the paradox is really the res resolution of the opportunities that are there with the risks, and that's something that the balance that's trying to be struck all the time, that's why we need kind of technological solutions to augment our situation, because there's so many opportunities, and when we do that research with wearables and we can see all the things that are possible and the excitement, and then, as was demonstrated there, then the people become aware of what the risks are, and they, and they just are, are almost paralyzed in terms of how to proceed uh, to walk that balanced line. So I think resolving that paradox is the biggest challenge moving forward. Yeah, because uh, it was great amusement. I actually got a fitness watch today, for, uh, for example, uh, and uh, I managed to connect with the privacy director of the GSM Association, so I'm now tracking his movements as well as him tracking mine. So uh, um, it's, it's clearly vitally important to us in, in, in a lot of these areas, and people don't actually realize how much information they're putting at risk. Yeah, I think that the, the key really is, is that transparency and trying to make it more visible, trying to empower people. And, and you know, I think this generation of these peculiar terms and conditions and all this kind of stuff is, 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 is a phase. And I think you know, we're, we'll come out the other side, but we're not sure what it's going to look like. Yeah, it's, it's, it's certainly scary. Yuval, uh, AVGZ sounds like a very different approach um, for an online security company known for antivirus software and so on. Uh, I wonder what gave you the idea and, uh, and why do you think consumers will want it? We've heard some, uh, a little bit, but uh, um, do you think there's a, a changing environment out there for people who want to uh, hear about these things? Sure, we're working very close with our consumer uh, and we're seeing them as they transition from the PC to the smartphone and we provided them with antivirus for the smartphone. It's the most downloaded software in the, in the Google Play market. And then they started to have tablets. As we're looking today, we're seeing them moving into the internet of things with all these wearable technologies and smart home and we are supporting, as they are transitioning, we are transitioning into that and providing them what they need for the peace of mind. Okay, I did give you a chance to ask the questions. Microphones are out there, please ask some questions. Can a user realistically control their data in a cloud environment, and does this really just come down to trust in the provider of the cloud service? So the data can be, uh, it's depending on the device, uh, the data can be identified from the network, and the data can be identified from the place where it is stored. So, for example, like the example I presented with the camera, it was quite easy to find out that this camera is broadcasting information in clear text of live video and also my credentials. So each device it has its own way in how it uh, uh, send the data out, and there are different ways how to identify it. Uh, we've got a question there. I'll, I'll, I'll take the gentleman who had his hand up. Okay, just... This is a pretty big vision, and I'm just curious, what kind of... Um... What, what kind of partnerships or relationships do you need to make this happen when you talk about extending this to the IoT? We mentioned that we're bringing this into over 177 million users. Users who are now starting to purchase these devices and having them either as wearables or starting to have their home uh, more automated. We, are, we welcome partners um, that, that create those type of technologies to make the home automatic in order to uh, get the life of the consumer easy. Partners who have wearables technology who would like to introduce them to this kind of uh, consumer that we're having. So they're very welcome to contact us either here, upstairs in our booth, or just after the conference, and we'll be happy to have the dialogues together. Thanks. There's a question just behind. As well. The primary concern that uh, was demonstrated is that uh, information is collected and is stored and processed globally by a few service providers who can then exploit the information for uh, servicing ads and, and whatever else. Now, how does this architecture protect the consumer against misuse of information that is legally collected by the devices that are operated? Good question. So, very much like um, today, if you're familiar with our privacy fix product, 
Uh, very much like today when you're browsing the internet, there's a lot of ad networks that are collecting information about you. Some of them are doing it for very reasonable uh, reasons. Some of them are not. But many of them having the option to opt out from this data collection. Not a lot of uh, consumers are aware that first, the data is being collected. Second, what is being collected. But most importantly, that they can opt out from all these kind of things. So with these devices, and I just demonstrated with the example of the privacy policy, data is being collected. If you bring that information to the consumer, give them back the control, and let them with a single click on the bottom, as we're doing with our privacy fix problem, product, you can solve that problem quite easily. One of the things that came out of some of our research was the commodification of data and a real move. There's an enormous desire in the marketplace. Consumers are approached to privacy, particularly a generational change, but more generally we're finding uh, is changing fundamentally. And one of the things that's changing is this kind of ability, willing to barter around that stuff. People are, are becoming aware that their data has value and that other people are commercializing and commodifying that data. And they're, they're, they, rather than saying that they don't want that to happen, they're, they're just sort of saying, I would like my, my piece of the pie. OK, well, uh, uh, perhaps you'd like to uh, just summarize briefly uh, of uh, what you think the lessons are for people and the sort of questions they should be asking with all their providers. So, Yuval. Yeah, what we learn from talking uh, with consumer, the first one and to be aware. They want to be aware of what is really happening. When I'm having a wearable device on my hand, I want to know what exactly is collecting. But I also want to have the choice to decide if I want this or if I don't want that. And this choice is very important for the consumer. Some of them will decide it's perfectly fine to share my data. Maybe I can get a better deal for my insurance company. Some of them will say, no, I don't want to share my data because I'm not interested with others to know about my very personal health. Chris? Yeah, I mean, that visual that I showed there with the networks and nodes, one of the things that's coming out for us is that trust is, you know, in the next 20 years, trust is the thing that's going to be valuable. And that's, you know, within that network, you will make very clear decisions based on what you trust and don't trust and, and you know, disregard that at your peril. And I think that's the... Uh, the transformation that we're seeing in early stages now, but we're expecting to see more and more. So transparency and trust are, are the big things. Yeah. Okay, we have a question here in the front row, thanks. The example that was given with the, uh, the home cam is a good one. Yep. Um, privacy by design, engineering privacy into the architecture. At what point do you think, or what paradigm shift do we need to experience till this becomes a whiteboard thing for the developers yeah. instead of uh, something that comes out competitively later because it's one way to get an advantage over the other guy. Yeah, I think uh, thanks to the NSA and all the news coming around, <laughs> consumers are asking more and more of these questions. How can we make this technology privacy by design? And uh, there is a big difference between the US and the EU in terms of how they're seeing privacy. But for those companies who are creating those technology, participate in all those forums, following those guidelines, and putting privacy into the products, making the user aware of what is being collected, what the vendors are doing with this data, it's one of the most important things. And this is something for us in AVG, is something we are following and believe is the right things for consumers. Okay, uh, well, we've got a question over there as well, thank you. So I'm curious, uh, you found out that your IP camera is exposing credentials and it's uh, exposing data in the clear. Have you changed anything at home in response to that? So um, I'm sure many of you having those smart devices at home, uh, smart TV for example, IP camera, if I'll ask, how many of you know what operating system is running there? What's the version of the firmware over there? When was the last time you updated it? What I found out is that camera, when I installed it, the firmware that came out of the box was unencrypted. But once I realized that that's the problem, I took an action and started to run the update for that firmware. And the latest one that actually released a couple of uh, weeks ago include that encryption. But without looking at this, this camera could still broadcast all this information out, including my credentials, and I have no idea that this is happening. So the fact that it will make you aware that this is happening 
the fact that it will let you know there is a way to solve it. This is the value as a consumer that you will know. I'm curious if any of the research is starting to show people as they become aware starting to give up as opposed to actually taking action and doing something about it. I'm sure in the next uh, Black Hat conference, we're going to see a lot of hacking example. This is, wasn't in a hacking presentation. It was just to make it aware. Um, we're watching it very closely um, as uh, we show the videos where the consumers start to see their reaction. We haven't seen them stepping back from this kind of reality. They see immediate value in them, but they just want to be aware everything is fine before the mass adoption. So we truly believe that bringing this information, giving the control, giving the choice, and no matter what platform you're using, either you're using the Apple, the Samsung, the LG, whatever the, uh, provider you're having, we're providing a horizontal solution that will be able to support that. Any other questions or thoughts? Yep, we have one over there, thank you. Um, okay, uh, one question for me is a very, very big thing is the central administration of the antivirus software, like you know it in the desktop environment. In the moment, I see all the uh, antivirus software applications are um, accessed by the uh, consumer itself or by the people in the company, but when we enroll 200 devices, and I want to have, as an administrator, I want to have the uh, control of the antivirus software, and I also want to be um, the administrator. And is there anything in development at A4G or? Yeah, AGZN will provide you the control on the antivirus, the security, the performance, the privacy on all those devices that you manage under the ZEN. We provided information when something goes wrong on these devices, all the devices, not that yours, the ones that your family have, the, the ones that your you know, broader family or your friends having. And that gives you an immediate uh, actionable information anywhere you go. Thanks, everybody, for a uh, great session.